Hello, F Sharp. Welcome back. We are continuing our journey of exploring the different features of the wonderful F Sharp language. Today, we're going to talk about something that is really core and fundamental to the language, and it is tuples. Tuples. Now, you may be familiar with tuples from other languages, perhaps not. And they are they're a very interesting type and very ubiquitous in functional programming. And so I want to kind of talk through them with you and kind of explain how to work with them, how to use them, and then maybe at the end kind of tease you with something that's going to kind of open your mind to um, what are tuples really. So let's talk about how we define the simplest of tuples. So a tuple is just a, it's a combination of values. So let my tuple equal x comma y. Oh, no, I'm going to actually put in numbers one and then a. And now what we see is I've defined a tuple, a two element tuple. In this case, the first element, see, is an integer. And the second element is a string. So if you saw the previous video on discriminated unions, I started to unpack the idea of an algebraic type system. If, if you are brand new to F sharp and to functional programming, you've never heard that term before, do not worry. You're okay. You can write fantastic F sharp code without understanding what the term algebraic type system is. So don't, I don't be intimidated. I'm introducing these terms more to plant seeds in your mind so that as you experience more F sharp, uh, as, as time goes on and water comes down, those seeds will bloom into better understanding. So if you don't understand all these terms, please, please, please do not be intimidated. So I've defined my first tuple and it's a combination of an integer and a string. And so we would qualify a tuple is an and type. And an and type is any time we take like a, a value and I and it with another value. So before like a F sharp record, if you saw the video on F sharp records, it said, hey, my chicken, oh, type chicken equal to, and I had a name string size float. This is an F sharp record. It has two different fields. One field is a string and the field name is name. <laughs> and the second field is a float and the name of that field is size. This is an and type because it's made up of string and a float. It's, it's I'm anding two more, two primitive types together. I'm anding a string with a float to get a new type, which is chicken. And you could almost, Think of chicken as being a named tuple. And let me, let's actually, let's have some more symmetry here. So clucky and then 10. Oh, I forgot the comma. My apologies. 10. And then let my chicken equal to name equal to clucky. Clucky. And then size equal to 10. Oh, this has to be a semicolon. My apologies. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm going to hit you with a little bit of type theory thinking here. And again, it's, it's for the purpose to kind of expand your understanding. This is, and uh, the series is introduction. Um, but I'm hoping to kind of just gently walk you through some things. So we introduced the idea of a record. And like I said, we have this chicken and it has a name field and a size field. This is a tuple. It has a string field and a float field. Chicken also has a string field. This one just happens to have a name. And it has a float field whose name happens to be size. You could say that a tuple is a record without names for the fields, just positional. You can think of it like a positional record, like the position of the elements is really what matters. 
in this record, if I changed it, the record hasn't really changed. It's still a string and it's still a float. Whereas if I change the order of this tuple, it would be a different thing. So the reason I'm bringing this up is there are some languages that, I believe NIM is one of them, where the idea of like, hey, they have tuples, then they have named tuples. So it's like the same thing as a tuple, but now it has names assigned, assigned to the position. So I'm going to take this back. So there are times when we're working at F-sharp, and I need to put two different types together. But I don't necessarily want to go to the effort to name these two different fields so I can use a tuple. And like I said, the way I created a tuple is I had a string. And then I used a comma to combine that string with a float. And this is one of those things that was kind of an aha moment for me. The comma in F sharp is an operator. It is the tupling operator. It is what you use to make a tuple. So here, what is actually happening is we're taking a string and this, and this comma is saying tuple this string with this float. So we're putting them together. So now you have a, a tuple, which is named my tuple. Cool. Now, tuples have different sizes. You have my uh, triple tuple. And you say, like, lucky. And then you could have, again, we could have a float, but then we could have an integer on the end if we wanted to. And so now we have a three element tuple. And you could have my uh, quad tuple. And then this, and we're going to just use completely different types here. So 1.0, and then. Uh, Marcus, and then, you know, and then we'll throw a decimal in the end. So again, I'm combining all these different types, but I'm putting to get them together into a tuple, and it's the comma operator that's allowing me to make the tuple. So we can create these, we can use them. What's interesting, though, is that two element tuples are a little bit special. And the reason for that is there are two functions in F sharp that are very convenient called first and second. And they only work with two element tuples. And what it allows you to do is you can say like, hey, I want X is going to be equal to first of my tuple. If I could spell correctly, there we go. And what first does is it takes a two element tuple and then it extracts the first element. So if you wanted to say like, hey, I have my tuple and I just want to get the first field out, you could use first, just FST. You also have second. So let y equals second of my tuple. And second is a function that takes a two element tuple and returns the second element. This gets, this becomes very useful when you have like collections of tuples and you want to group by the second element or you want to group by the first element. So it, it comes up quite a bit. It can be very useful. Um, so it's nice to have them. And it's something that you should definitely be aware of and be exposed to. So if you see it, you don't get confused by what is going on there. I actually don't use them a lot right now. And that's just because the work I'm doing doesn't involve as much data munging work. I do a lot of performance engine work, but when I was doing a lot more data analysis, these two functions were incredibly useful. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about when it comes to tuples is how do you, how do you um, break tuples apart? So in this case, we are creating a tuple. Let's say we want to take that tuple apart. So let's say we want to have name, size equal to my tuple, my tuple, assuming I can spell. And so what we are now doing is with this syntax, we are deconstructing this tuple. We are taking it back apart. And so you, one of the things I'm going to create a whole video on the symmetries inside of F sharp, but I'll just point it out here, like recognize that to create a tuple, I'm using the comma operator. 
and to break a tu- a cup a <laughs> to break a tuple apart, I am again using a comma. It's just now on the left side of the equals, and this is the destructuring that you can do in F sharp, saying like, "Hey, I have a thing, and I'm breaking it into these pieces." And so often in F sharp, there are symmetries like this. I'm creating a tuple here. I'm breaking it apart here. And again, it also works with uh, tuples of larger sizes. So we have like, uh, I'm just going to say A, B, C equal to my uh, triple tuple. Again, if I could spell, it'd be fantastic. So my triple tuple is a tuple of string float int. And then when I unpack it, A is a string, B is a float, C is an int. So if you have a tuple, this is the way that you can break them apart into separate pieces. There's another type of tuple that you should be aware of. The default tuples in F sharp are reference types, just like records in F sharp. A record in F sharp is a reference type, is a reference type, which means its memory is allocated on the heap. Tuples in F sharp are also reference type and often allocated on the heap. Now the F sharp compiler is incredibly smart and will sometimes see that, hey, maybe I don't need to do that and it can get around that. So I'm going to introduce a new concept to you, but I'm also gonna warn you, like it's, it's not necessarily a magic go fast uh, uh, sauce. And that's the idea of the struct tuple. What is a struct tuple? So F sharp did not have these by default when it first came out, but I, I love that we have them now. So what is it? So let my struct tuple equal to struct. And then I'm going to have lucky again, and then uh, 10. So this syntax is how I would create a struct tuple. And so I have this tuple I'm going to, hover over here. So I have a struct tuple of string and float. And again, I can have, you know, any number of elements I wanted on there. And I could also destructure it, but I have to, again, there's a kind of this symmetry of, uh, I'm going to go in and F equal to my struct tuple. So Again, there's a symmetry here. I'm creating a struct tuple by having struct open parentheses, the elements separated by comma, close parentheses. And then I'm unpacking it using that same syntax, but now to the left of the equal sign. Hover over N is a string and F is a float. So again, notice this symmetry. That, that is important stuff. So why struct tuples? Well, because sometimes you want to create a tuple, but you don't want it to be allocated on the heap because you're, you might be in a really tight loop and you're going to create a lot of these as you iterate through this loop. And if you create a lot of objects on the heap, that is possibly going to trigger the garbage collector. So in high performance scenarios, what you can do is use struct tuples. Now, I do not default to struct tuples. They're just a little bit more cumbersome to work with. That's why. If I do profiling and benchmarking to say like, hey, I'm creating a lot of tuples. I'm allocating a lot of objects on the heap. I want to eliminate that. Then I might go to the effort of going through and turning these into struct tuples. The reason I don't necessarily default to it is again, the F sharp compiler is a fantastic piece of engineering. And it knows about this. And so it can be very clever sometimes and actually be getting rid of the problem. And so you might look at the code like, oh my goodness, this is gonna allocate so many uh, tuples on the heap and it's gonna trigger the garbage collector. Not necessarily. Sometimes the compiler is very smart and says like, oh, I don't need to do that. And through the magic of inlining, it just never happens. So don't just jump to the assumption that like, oh, we should only ever be using struct tuples. Goodness, no, that is not what I'm saying. But I'm really glad we have this feature now. Well, we've had this feature for a while, I believe. But having struct tuples addressed one of the real pain points for me when using tuples because 
I didn't have a clean mechanism for upgrading, air quotes. Uh, I guess upgrading is the wrong term, but I wanted a mechanism to easily change a reference type tuple to a struct tuple. And before we had struct tuples, I couldn't do that. I'd have to turn this into like a struct record or something, which is also why, again, if you see the record video, or well, the structs video, you can easily turn an F-sharp record into a struct. And we're going we're gonna to need to have a follow-up video to unpack that more. But now this F-sharp record would be allocated on the stack. So that was really nice. I can default to the F-sharp record and easily make it something that's allocated on the stack. Now I could have a tuple and I could turn it to something that's allocated on the stack by adding struct. It is clunkier to work with. I'm not going to lie. But it's there and it is available for us to use. So this is just could have been like a really brief introduction to the idea of tuples and how to use them F sharp. In the future, we can go, we're gonna go into a lot more detail, but I just wanna expose you to this concept so when you see them, you have an idea of how to work with them. So uh, I really appreciate you spending some time with me. If you have further questions, things that you want me to dive deeper into, please leave a comment saying like, hey, Matthew, I really wish you would unpack this. Or if you have ideas for things that you would like me to cover or problems you want me to dive into, I love hearing about that because I'm ultimately making this for the F-Sharp community and, and I'm hoping it adds value to you. So thank you very much for spending some time with me today. Have a good day.